As we have been saying, September Blood Cancer Awareness Month, and today, September 20th, a very special day of celebration for all of us. Yeah, it is. It was, um, well, five years ago today that I had my bone marrow transplant. That was after 10 consecutive days of chemotherapy to get me ready for the transplant. And it was considered to be a rebirth. And I definitely felt that I was getting another chance at life. Sometimes treatment for cancer can lead to other serious medical issues and that's what I'm facing right now. It is something that is called MDS. My big sister is a virtually perfect match for me and she is going to be my donor. She's gonna be my donor. Five years ago today, surrounded by my family and close friends, I was given the gift of life. Keep me, keep me from you. With a bone marrow transplant. I feel all the love in here, all the love. We're keeping it boring, you say keep it boring. My transplant doctor, Sergio Geralt, said a prayer for me as he inserted millions of my sister Sally Ann stem cells into a port in my chest. I think now is a good time to say, go Sally, go. <laughs> The weeks after my transplant were brutal, spent mostly in isolation. When I was able to leave my room, I had to wear a mask and gloves, and everyone around me had to do the same, all in an effort to keep me strong as I recovered and built up my immune system. But at times, I felt anything but strong. We gotta stop meeting like this, Petula. <laughs> Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. We love you, dear sister, yes we do. Rejoice, oh Robin. After 30 days, I walked out of the hospital and felt blessed to take my first breath of fresh air. After five years, by the grace of God, Amber, and my family, I am thriving, healthy, strong, and eternally grateful for life. Robin. To celebrate my anniversary, I caught up with Dr. Geralt, who was very excited to share with me some of the advances that have been made in the bone marrow transplant community. He invited me to a brand new housing facility for patients with blood cancers and disorders, the Memorial Sloan Kettering Patient Residence. So we said, well, let's make a facility that allows them to heal better. I just can't imagine uh, having gone through it five years ago as I did mm -hmm. and would have welcomed something like this. So this is like a community area. Correct. And how many patients can be here? We have 20 units or so 20 patients mm -hmm. with their family caregivers. The facility is an apartment building for patients who are recovering from transplants. Each unit is a home away from home. It's a part of Memorial Sloan Kettering's outpatient and early discharge program. Does insurance cover this? Excellent question. We work with the patient's families and their, uh, and their insurance companies. Most insurance companies pay, not everybody does. But other than that, what qualifies a patient to be able to be eligible to be here? Patients have to A, want to be doing the transplant as an outpatient or want to be discharged early. B, they have to have a caregiver that is with them while they're here, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And obviously the other one is they have to be what we would call medically qualified. All this is made possible because in the last five years, the tremendous advances when it comes to the bone marrow transplant. Tell us about the significant medical advances. So, I mean, there are many advances. These genetically modified mm. T cells, we take their immune fighting cells, they get genetically modified in the lab to attack a specific protein that is expressed on their tumors. And then we give those cells back. And lo and behold, eight out of 10 patients actually go on remission. The other big one is, we've always said you were blessed that you have a donor. Yes and that one of the biggest barriers to stem cell transplantation was not having a donor in the family. Now, even if your brothers and sisters don't match fully, 
we can do a transplant with their stem cells with similar results to what we got with a brother or sister who's fully matched. That's, That's huge. huge. That's huge. Lindell is being treated for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Just three weeks after her transplant, she's already back on her feet. Hello. Hello. Recovering here at the patient residence. What has it meant to you to be able to be here to recover? Oh, it's meant everything to us. It's been a respite. It has simplified our life. As a caregiver, while she's in the hospital, it's close enough that I could, you know, go back and forth throughout the day. As you know, when you're in there, you're, I don't want to say you're trapped there for a while, but you're there for a while. Exactly. How are you feeling? I feel great. I feel rested. I feel just wonderful. But I have battled this for 12 years and finally we had a solution at the end that I could get this, the stem cell mm -hmm. and move on to the next step. Well, thank you for sharing your story and your journey. And Lindell and her husband have been married for 49 years and I already invited myself to their golden anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> I did, I did, honestly. And they're like, oh, okay, no. Um, got my whole family here. I got my family there, support my family there. Sally Ann, who was my donor, my partner Amber, who was there every step of the way. And I'm usually pretty composed, so I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna lean on you a little bit, George, but uh, I've got my whole family here. And somebody who left the nest, Richard Besser, Dr. Yeah. Richard Besser is back with us. Thank you. He's now the president and CEO of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation doing some great work and we're gonna to talk to you about that. But I, I had to say thank you, you and Diane Sawyer were uh, my beacons, you were my North Star in helping me navigate so much. And the, the, it's, it's a given, the, the, your family are gonna be there, your family and your friends, if you're, you're blessed and, and it's a given that they're, the importance that they have. But this, your family at work is so incredibly vital. Talk about the work of caregivers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so important. I mean, and when I reflect back on, on that time, what you gave to all of us through letting us see your journey, the highs and the lows, um, letting us see your strength, that gave courage to, to, to people all over the country, all, all over the world. The, 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 the ability you had to let people in to help you, people at work who, who s stepped up to help you, and the role of the caregiver. You know, we, we think of, the, we often take the caregiver for, for granted, know. but it's, it's an incredibly important role. You, you can't get a transplant unless you have a caregiver who's willing to be there 24 seven. And it takes a person who's got love, but may not have medical experience and turns them into a medical professional mm -hmm. whose job is to keep you safe. And we need to do a lot more to make sure that they're supported, that they have the social supports around them, so that in, in giving you what you needed, they get what they, they need. Get what they need. Yeah. You're a medical professional now? <laughs> Amber. Absolutely. I learned so much just every day, just being there and being every step of the way. You're being thrown information and you're trying to keep it all together. Sorry. So I'm what, advice, what <laughs> advice do you have for people who are in a similar situation? Um, Definitely take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself, whether it, you know, if you're being relocated and you're away from your home and, you know, during the days in your everyday life, if you exercise, go to the gym, find a yoga studio, do something so you can just release all of this energy that you have built up from being around and being the giver and giving, 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 and it allows you to love and be able to be there supportive. And it was so great that um, we had a lot of group of friends that came in and, and helped yes. my sister and, and Amber. Uh, but I wanted to really talk about my colleagues here. You filled in for me, you and Elizabeth Vargas so much. We had Oprah, we had other people yeah. who came in. There were people that I heard from that said, we showed them, we showed them how you care for somebody going through an illness like that. And they are now doing um, job sharing too, yeah. to not have to worry about their job like I didn't have to worry about mine. So I'm so grateful to all of you. Thank you. We're grateful. Yeah. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.